One of the first videos on this channel was about my homebrew Space Marine chapter, the Feral Tusks. And here's what they look like. It was the first time I had ever really used green stuff, and honestly my first real conversion. I had fun, but looking back I don't think the models aged particularly well. So as soon as I saw the Phobos kill team, and let's be honest how boring it was, I knew I could fix them by giving them the Feral Tusk treatment. So that's just what I did. Before we get any further, here they are in all of their tusky glory. A big improvement since my last try, I think. But since I need a few more operatives to fill out the roster, I thought I'd show you how I do it. Not the best way, but what works for me right now. So, this is me at a desk. These are my hands. This is the model I'm working on. Boy, good thing I cleared up those questions. I'm building an infiltrator slash incursor sergeant here. Uh, an infil cursor, if you will. They're so similar, uh, I know that I can run them easily as, you know, either or and be totally fine. The first step is to remove the skull and crossbones emblem from his chest. I don't stop there though, I prefer to remove this little pectoral plate, let's call it. I just think it looks weird. On God, for real, for real. No cap. To do this, I'm just slowly shaving that lip down with my X-Acto blade. Less is more here, so don't go too crazy. After the lip is mostly shaved down, I start the process of shaving it flat by scraping the hoppy knife along the surface. I alternate using the sharp and dull side of the blade, but, you know, your mileage may vary. Now that it's been shaved down and scraped smooth, we're ready to continue building him. But first, what even is a hobby session without a good audiobook or podcast? May I recommend Kill Team Casuals for your consideration? It's 100% the best Kill Team podcast recorded in three different time zones, guaranteed. Myself and my two co-hosts, Russ and Reese from GFN Gaming and Threes to Wound respectively, make up the Kill Team power couple you didn't know you needed in your life. We're all casual players who love the game, so check us out if you like Kill Team or just like listening to three idiots doing riffs and bits. They're being released bi-weekly right now, so go check them out wherever podcasts are listened to and feel free to give us a five-star review. The tech priests tell us that that goes a long way or something. All right, back to the conversion. I shave and scrape the hair off of this Primaris head because I don't want a clean crew cut. Feral tusks have a pretty brutal Space Wolf style aesthetic, so no crew cuts allowed. Only buzz cuts or long flowing manes. No in between. I think it's important for your leader to look and feel like a leader, so I've given him a cool pointing arm for a commanding pose. The other hand just gets a bolter, and because I want to play him as an infiltrator and also an incursor, uh, I chop the scope off the little top of the magazine bit, then I clean it up, and then I attach it. And now he's not tied down to any particular model. Alright, time to sculpt a beard. Alright, fine, it's no secret, I have beard envy, alright? Look at my two co-hosts on Kill Team Casuals. So, I choose to live vicariously through my space marines. Let's move on. Let's start by mixing up some green stuff and rolling it into a chunky snake style shape, and then push it into position with a hobby knife or tool of your choosing. Once you get it into position, you can push it into place and start flattening it with the flat side of the hobby knife. The key to good green stuff work is using some sort of lubrication. Now let's be adults here, okay? My lube of choice here is coconut oil, good for lubing all sorts of things, okay? So go ahead and give it some texture by poking and prodding and adding some lines to simulate the hair. When you're going to be adding multiple different hair textures like human hair and animal fur on the same miniature, uh, you want to make sure that there's a difference there. Animal fur will obviously be chunkier and sharper and human hair will be finer. Just keep that in mind. Now roll up a skinny snake of green stuff for the mustache and poke it into place. After that, give it some texture as well and boom, that's a beard dude. Congratulations. Let's move on to the loincloth. I'm wetting my cutting surface with water to prevent the green stuff from sticking, but the best practice here is actually to use parchment paper because it won't stick. Let it dry for a few minutes and then cut out a rough shape. I ended up cutting it way too long and had to shorten it, but it's always better to have too much instead of too little. After it's had a few minutes to cure a little bit, I poke it into position underneath the Space Marine's belt. I'll be adding fur on top of this so I know I don't need the joint to be all that clean, which is helpful. Cloth can be really tricky, and it needs to have some movement to actually sell it. So I start by adding some folds and lines to imply that it's a windy day, and his loincloth is flapping all about. For good measure, I even fray the edges so it doesn't look too clean. After this, I roll up a really chunky snake and poke it into place around the Space Marine's waist. That rhymed. 
Then I use the flat side of the hobby knife to flatten it into position. For animal fur, I like to start out with a sort of cross-hatching pattern with diagonal lines going all around the pelt and then more diagonal lines going the opposite direction. This leaves you with a bunch of diamond shapes and I think it's a really great place to start. Once you have all these little diamond shapes in your green stuff, I take the back end of the point on my X-Acto blade and use a sort of flicking motion to get that fur texture uh, just how I want it. There are other ways to do this, but I really like how matted this looks. Without the diamond shapes, it can just look like a big patch of indentations or holes or something, and it just looks a little lackluster to me. So I'm pretty happy with this. You might not be, that's okay, but I am. Now, you can't have a Warhammer model, especially not a sergeant, without a skull. So I've given him a trophy skull here. I think this is the skull of his favorite human squire who died serving the chapter or something. I don't know. It's always fun to think of cool little stories as you build these guys, you know, at least in my opinion. Next up is sculpting the titular tusks. Feral tusk sergeants or huntsmasters get to wear their tusks mounted on the backpack to designate rank. I'm rolling some more green stuff into, you guessed it, a chunky snake, and then using the natural curvature of my fingertip to form the shape. Get it pointy enough to your liking and then let it dry overnight. Now this might take a little bit of finessing, a little finagling, do it a couple times. I had to do it a few times, um, but the natural curve of, of your fingertip works really well for this. Once the horns have dried, cut off the dull end and drill a hole with a pin vise and then glue in a little bit of wire. Then drill a hole on top of each thruster thing on the backpacks and go ahead and glue them in place. That's all there is to it. After that, it's time for more fur. Roll out the fattest snake in the world and drape it over the Space Marine's shoulder pads. And then I follow the same process as before for the loincloth fur. Once that's done, I'm pretty happy with where we are, but I feel like he needs a little more personality. And I'm trying to knock out two birds with one stone because my other problem here is that Primaris Marines in particular have such a tiny waist, so slim. So I just fixed that by adding more trinkets and pouches, etc., around the waist. Easy fix, a lot of personality, love it. And after all that, I think I'm gonna call him done. All that's left to do is put him on a base. So I drill a hole and pin him into place. Wow, more rhymes. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. All things considered, this really didn't take that much time and it adds so much character and flavor to your army or kill team. Even if you only end up doing it to your sergeant models, or your leaders or specialists, whatever it is, it's this whole idea of a kill team, a force, a model versus your kill team, your model, your force, your army. And it's so much more fun, at least in my opinion, to play with your guys, your team, your models. It's so much more fun and adds so much more enjoyment when I'm playing as my Vostroyans instead of just, uh, you know, Cadian Guard. Or I'm playing with my Feral Tusks instead of just playing, oh, just this regular unconverted uh, force. Now, that's not for everybody. And that's okay. That's a good thing. We're all different. We all have different opinions. You know, I uh, if, if you prefer to just build things stock and you can enjoy that, that's awesome. I wish I could do that. But I just have so much more enjoyment in the gameplay when I'm playing a team that I'm psyched on the conversion for. Well, this is my process and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this style of video, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do more of them. I'm always working on some kind of kit bash or conversion, so there's no shortage of ideas there. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for liking and commenting and subscribing and being so cool and nice over the internet. If you like the channel and want to support it, I have a Patreon and a Teespring linked in the description below. You guys are the best. I'll see you around.